Hello, Mr. Hypes here at the Dollar General in Daytona. We're on a supply run, but the art supply that we're looking for might surprise you. Let's go inside and see if they have any in stock. Mm, no, don't need any sausages. Mm, nope, already got peanut butter at the house. <gasps> there it is, and it's the last one left. Cotton swabs, that's what we're after. Also, some tinfoil. We've made it safely back to East Middle School and the art supplies have been acquired. Let me tell you what we're gonna use these for. Cause you might be thinking, what the heck could cotton swabs and aluminum foil have to do with art? Well, we're going to use these simple tools to make a stylus for digital art. Because if you've ever tried to make digital art just using the old finger, it doesn't go so well. Luckily, we can avoid this frustration by taking a Q-tip and about a five or six inch piece of tinfoil. Fold the tinfoil over to get a neat three inch wide rectangle. Tightly wrap the tinfoil around the Q-tip, making sure that the tinfoil touches the cotton on the end. Once it's wrapped up nice and snug, trim off the extra tinfoil and dip the end in water. This basically creates a robot finger because it has an electrical signal and a little bit of moisture that will trigger the trackpad to work. And then test it out. You should click the trackpad and hold it down with one hand while you move the stylus to write or draw. If you want to step up your stylus game, cut the Q-tip in half. Take out the end of a pen. Put the Q-tip into the end of the pen. Put a piece of tape on it so that it doesn't slide out. Wrap it in tinfoil. Tape off the tinfoil so that it doesn't come undone. Dip it in water. And now you've got a more solid stylus to work with. Shout out to CNET videos for giving me the information on how to make this stylus. I learned a lot while watching the video, but I have to admit, I was a little bit distracted. In order for this to work, the static electricity from your finger, you can start using your stylus. Just be sure that your finger is always to start using your stylus. Despite these suspicious characters in the background, the host maintained her professionalism. And as it turns out, is even a bit of a manga artist herself. Double shout out. Now that you got your stylus, you're ready to draw. On a Chromebook, search up Sketchpad. The Sketchpad program is the best, easiest to use online drawing program that I've found. Now, if you have a stylus that is not homemade or an iPad or any other drawing program that you wanna use, go for it. The whole point of this video is that you can create digital art using anything from a Chromebook and a Q-tip on up to whatever else you got. In the Sketchpad program, whatever program you choose, we'll be drawing in the anime or manga style with angular features, big eyes, and minimal nose and mouth. Beyond that, you can choose to do whatever style or details, additions to your character that you would like. But especially if this is your first time doing this, keep the character design pretty simple. And definitely no digital tracing, where you upload a drawing into the drawing program and then draw over top of it. We're going to be drawing right on a blank slate. As you follow the steps in this video, don't be afraid to experiment and mess up. The first drawing I did turned out kind of crazy, but I learned a lot while I was doing it. For the first step of the drawing, select the pencil tool. Change the outline color to light blue. We'll use this light blue pencil to make an underdrawing or a rough sketch of the manga face. Start with a circle and then do the angular jaw and chin. In this one, I shifted my chin over just a little bit to the right to make it look like the head is tilted slightly. You could do the same, or you could put your chin dead center. Either way, you'll want to use the two angled lines going down to the chin. Then you'll slice the head in half vertically and horizontally. Before I draw the eyes, I'm going to zoom in. When you zoom in, it allows you to much more easily draw the details. I'm gonna start with the eyebrows, having them pretty close together and angling down. Because the head is tilted in mine, the left eye is going to be a little bit bigger and there's going to be more space between the eye and the edge of the head on the left side. The upper eyelids have a curved hook shape. The bottom eyelids are flat 
and the iris is a circle that is cropped by the upper eyelid. The nose should be simple and touch the bottom of the circle that we started with. I'm going with an open mouth smile that's drawn with an upside down trapezoid shape. Big diamond shaped ear on the left side. And then a more thin shape on the right because it's partially hidden by the head since his head is tilted. For the hair, I'm gonna mark halfway on the forehead and also the growth point on the side of the head. And that's gonna give me some guidelines so that as I do my spiky shapes, I know where to put them. I'm gonna have the spikes go off to the right and come down a little bit past the ear. And the growth point, they're gonna spike up and change direction going down to the left. Due to the slightly turned head, the neck will start a little further over on the left and also the left shoulder will be a little bit longer than the right. The left arm will also be a little bit bigger than the right arm. All of those adjustments are to give the character a natural, slightly turned pose. This blue drawing is a rough sketch. It's an underdrawing that we're gonna draw back on top of with neat black lines. Change the outline color to black. And change your drawing tool to a pen. Draw back over your sketch with neat black lines. It's hard to draw perfect circles, so I clicked the star button, which is the shape tool, and dropped in two circles and resized them to fit inside the eyes. Outline all of the facial features and hair, but do not outline the circle that you started with or the horizontal or vertical lines that go down the face. We're actually going to delete those in just a second. As you outline, make sure you completely close off each shape. For example, don't leave a gap between the hair and the skin. You'll see why that's important in a second when we add color. You can change the thinness of your pen if you want to add some detail in the eyes or the teeth. This is where things get a little bit technical. Click the layers button in the top left and scroll down until you start seeing your pencil layers. Find the last pencil layer and click it. Then scroll down and find your first pencil layer. It'll be right above the layer for your background. Hold down the shift key, and while you're holding it down, click onto that first pencil layer. That will highlight all of your pencil layers, and then click delete or backspace. That will delete your underdrawing, and you'll be left with nothing but your nice, neat outline. The third and final step is to color the drawing. Click the paint bucket and switch from vector fill to pixel fill. Click fill and then click color so that it fills in with a nice solid color, not a gradient. Then just select the colors that you want. I'll start with a pale skin color. I'll click that and then click the skin to automatically fill it in. I'll select a nice golden yellow color for the hair. And I'll go with blue for the clothes and blue for the eyes as well because in general it's good to keep your color palette pretty simple and limited i'm going to make a few detailed adjustments but i want to point out again that if you fill in part of your drawing with color and the color spills into another part of the character that you didn't want it to be in that means that, that shape is not completely closed off so you have to figure out which part of your outline is missing finish off that little part of the outline and then it should solve the problem and you can always use the paintbrush tool to fix any small areas that may need a touch up Now let's jazz up that blank background a bit. You could just drop in a solid color, or I could make use of that linear tool to give it a little bit more of a gradient and some detail, some pizzazz. I like this kind of stripey red and orange to white one. I'll rotate it to a bit of an angle and we're done. Time to crop and export. Hit the crop tool at the very top. And then I'm going to crop this down to a square. I'm gonna make it exactly 617 pixels by 617 pixels because I don't really need all that extra hanging off to the right side. Hit the red apply crop button at the bottom and your drawing will now be in a nice square instead of a long rectangle. To save your drawing, go down to the floppy disk icon. By the way, that's what that thing is, a floppy disk. Before the cloud, thumb drives, even before the CD, there was the floppy disk. Shout out to the floppy disk. Save your drawing as either a JPEG or a PNG. That will safely deposit it into the files on your Chromebook. 
Then go to Google Classroom, make a new comment, something like digital anima, animu, an, an anime, there we go, digital anime dude, and then click on your files or your Google Drive and insert your digital manga drawing to post it and share it with the class. Thanks to this trusty homemade stylus, I was able to make a digital drawing on a Chromebook. It was a little bit tedious at times, but once I get into the workflow of the program, it was really fun. So head on down to the Dollar General or to the kitchen cabinet, grab yourself a Q-tip, some tin foil, and get drawing.